20 years ago, there were roughly 800 satellites in orbit. Today, there's over 8,000. Elon Musk and Starlink alone have 5,400. But without CNC machining and parts like this, we wouldn't have satellites at all. This part right here is instrumental in positioning those satellites by flexing. Without it, we wouldn't have things like GPS, internet, missile launch detection, and more. And Barry and Jesse could never machine this part. What do you say, janitor? That's some big talk for somebody that runs an electric bandsaw. So by the end of this video, I'm gonna show you what it takes to make this part. Please like and subscribe so that you can see more of the mediocrity that Trevor brings you on a daily basis. I'm sure one of us will have a video out soon, so you'll see some real machining. Yeah. All right, so here is the monolithic butterfly flexor that we're gonna be making today. And it's a high precision part that's used for pointing and scanning space mechanisms. Now we're gonna be machining this part over on our Cup P550 Pro wire EDM. Now this thing has a plus or minus 15 degrees of rotational adjustment. And through fatigue analysis, we found that we can make 1.4 million adjustments of plus or minus seven and a half degrees before this thing fails. To get set up, we're simply gonna clamp our tire titanium stock right to our table. Now the challenge with that is it doesn't give us any way to adjust our stock so that the top is perfectly flat. I'm gonna show you a cool feature on this machine that completely solves that problem. All right, now that we got our stock clamped down, let's throw an indicator on this and see how the top looks. All right, so we're out a little over a thou, and since we're clamped to our table, how would you adjust that out? You could use shims, but on our Cut P550 Pro, we actually have a probe that's gonna come down from our upper head, and it's gonna probe three points on the top surface of that part. That is gonna take our wire and align it to be perfectly perpendicular with the top surface of our part. And the best part is, it does it automatically. Another thing I like to do to try and save time is I like to put our start hole near the edge of our hole instead of in the center. Wire EDM is very precise, but it's also very slow. And there's no reason to cut from the center of our slug when we can cut near the edge of our hole and save a little bit of time. All right, so we just got done roughing all of our holes and our pockets and we left a 50 thousandths tab. We did that so our machine can come in and rough all of our holes and pockets completely unattended. Then when it comes time to pull the slugs, all we have to do is cut the 50 thousandths tab off and remove all those slugs. When we're done with that, then we can move on to roughing our profile. <laughs> So what's the philosophy behind roughing all of our pockets at once and then pulling all our tabs at once? Well, that allows me to walk away from this machine for about three hours while it roughs everything. Then, when it's time to cut the tabs, I can come back and pull them all at once and then I can walk away from the machine again. If I were to cut everything individually, I'd have to come back to this machine roughly every 30 minutes and pull slugs and that's just not efficient. So I like to do it this way. All right, so as you can see, we just got done cutting this off and it's sitting in there and it's loose and it needs to come out. But there's no way to really grab it and I can't reach underneath here and get it. This is non-magnetic, so I can't use a magnet. Only option would be to come in through that hole and try and hook it and pull it out. But we're actually gonna use our lower flush jet and we're gonna shoot this slug out of our part. Three, two, one. All right, so after we turned on our lower jet, as you can see, here's our slug that was shot out of our hole. Now we can just get back to machining. So now that we got our slugs out, let's go ahead and rough the outside profile of our flexure. Now with the nature of this part being flexible, we're not sure how much it's gonna spring after the rough cut. So let's give ourselves a safety net. If you take a look at our Uniqua control, you'll see our technology file has a rough and three trim cuts. Our first offset is 218.6 microns, which is eight thousandths and six tenths. After that, we have two thousandths and three tenths of stock per side to clean up our part. It's very easy. We come down to our first trim cut and we're actually gonna right click on that and hit duplicate. Now after that, you'll see that it automatically recalculates our offsets. Our first pass now has an offset of 255.8 microns, which is 10 thousandths. So as you can see, by adding a trim cut, that gives us an additional thou and a half per side of stock to clean up our part after it springs from the rough cut. All right, so the rough profile cut for our butterfly flexure just finished. Let's go ahead and pull the slug out. 
At this point, we've roughed out our entire flexure and our part is being held by this 3 8 wide tab right here. We wanted to do that because we want our part to relax and spring and move wherever it's going to before we come in with our finish passes and clean it up. If we were to tab this part in these areas right here and then finish everything and cut our tabs free, we run the risk of our part springing when we cut those tabs free and then we would have no material to clean it up. So let's go ahead and throw our indicator on our part and see how much it moved. So as you can see, our part has sprung a little over two thousands. Now, if we were to run this with the standard technology and offsets, this would come very close to not cleaning up. But since we duplicated our first skim cut, we know we have plenty of stock to clean up our part. Now that we got our part all cleaned up, I wanted to go ahead and throw it under an indicator just to check it out and see how everything looks. All right, so we're zero there, run over to the other side, and looks like we're proud about a tenth. So what this tells me is our plan worked. Our part is very, very accurate. And really this just goes to show the importance of assessing your part before you start making it, trying to figure out all the hurdles that you might have to overcome, and then selecting a process that's gonna help you overcome those hurdles so you can successfully make your part. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. We're almost two million subscribers, so please hit that subscribe button on your way out. Also leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know what we should make next on our wire EDM. And if you're looking for tooling, go to titansandcnctooling.com. We've been adding a ton of products to our online store, so check it out. Thank you guys again. I'll catch you next time.